Hey, well, welcome, welcome, welcome to our Pursuit of Wisdom series. And I do pray that if it's not uh, automatically in your heart right now, the passion for wisdom, that it would increasingly uh, have that place uh, in your heart. Um, I, I believe that it's, it's one of the mandates of the Lord. In fact, it's so critical that Jesus identified himself in the book of Corinthians, chapter 1, I believe it's verse 30. Yeah, he's identified by Paul uh, as our wisdom. He is the person of wisdom. He was the person of wisdom on the day of creation in Proverbs 8. So we're going to look at this person and anything of the characteristics or nature of Christ that is supposed to be demonstrated, manifested in our life is always going to be through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. He is the one who helps to make this real and manifested in our life. The guy that we know for wisdom in Scripture is Solomon. I love studying him, and I know that he ended up bad, but uh, it wasn't the fault of wisdom. It was the fact that he stopped reading his own book of Proverbs that he ended up in a mess but he really broke some ground for us that I think is very very profound. And if we can stop being offended at his failure and learn to learn and uh, absorb from his his success, I think we can pick up some things that would really help us in this this particular hour. Here's where we're going to start. We're going to start a little bit later in the story um, in the sense that we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 4. What I want to do in this series is take verses from each chapter and go in sequence throughout the book of Proverbs. But to start with, I need to start actually where the story began. And this is where he gives us his account of his journey into wisdom. This is Solomon. And it's in verse 1 of chapter 4. He says, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father. Give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. And here he starts unveiling his personal journey. When I was a, uh, my father's son, excuse me, when I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. And it goes on from there. He begins to illustrate the nature of wisdom, the power of wisdom, and how wisdom actually keeps us safe. It guards us, and on and on and on the story unveils. But what uh, struck me is we know Solomon was given this visitation of God, which we'll look at next, this visitation of God where he was given an opportunity to make a choice. He could have anything he wanted. He had found such incredible favor with God that the, 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 the Lord showed up in a dream and invited him to choose anything he wanted. He didn't choose long life. He didn't choose wealth. He didn't choose any of the things that many others would have contended for. Instead, he chose wisdom. And how did he know what to choose? I'd like to suggest David prepared him for the choice. David was the one who... Uh, uh, when his uh, son Solomon was small, he began to train him to know what was important in life. He had learned through his own ups and downs, through his own successes, through his own failures, that the real issue of life was to function in divine wisdom. Divine wisdom is that partnership with the mind of Christ that actually becomes illustrated and manifested in and through us. And so Solomon is trained from childhood, son, choose wisdom, son, choose wisdom. In your wisdom, make sure that you get understanding. This is the principal thing. This is the valuable thing. And so Solomon, when he is older and he's now king and he knows he doesn't have what he needs to be king, and the Lord shows up and says, you can have whatever you want. He was prepared to make the right choice. Here's the deal. I think you and I can prepare ourselves for future decisions by positioning our heart and our mind for a readiness for what God might put in our lap that would be unearned, perhaps even unexpected, as it was for Solomon. God showed up and said, you can have whatever you wanted. And he he resisted the temptation to choose what any other king in the world would have chosen. Long life, son after son after son following in his throne. He rejected all of that, set it aside as, as not the top priority and he chose wisdom. He was prepared to do so. As parents, we actually prepare our children to make decisions uh, that they are going to face later in life. I like to look at it this way. I'm wondering, Solomon is the only one that we see that was given that option in the Bible. 
but he's also the only one we see that was trained to make the right decision. I sometimes wonder if maybe the way we train our children, maybe the way we train in our relationships with friends, the way we speak prophetically or encouraging words, the way we actually deposit hope into other people's lives, if actually that process might not actually attract the activity of God, that God might, might actually give somebody an option because they're the only ones prepared to make the right decision. You and I have a tremendous role in preparing people for a supernatural, really fulfilled life in ways that uh, is ignored by so much of the church. And you and I were born for significance. I don't mean big title, I don't mean fame and all that stuff. I mean significance in the eyes of God and significance in, in the sense that we fulfill our purpose. And wisdom is at the heart of that, that you and I could live in and function in divine wisdom. There's this passage out of um, Ephesians chapter 4 that says, Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for the moment that it might give encouragement or strength to those who hear, according to the need of the moment that it might give grace to those who hear. Think about that with me for a minute. Don't let unwholesome words come, but instead, words that prepare people for grace. Can you think with me? Grace is a God-given gift. It is divine favor. It's divine enablement. So when you and I choose, instead of speaking degrading words or, or death words, but really life-giving, encouraging words, we actually are marking that individual to experience God's grace. It's almost like God says, you trust them, I'm going to trust them. Now, I understand he's sovereign, he can do whatever he wants, but he has chosen to co-labor with us. And part of our role in life is to bring strength and encouragement to people around us and to speak words of great hope that attracts into their life that sense of opportunity and purpose that they might not have had otherwise. I think that's what happened to Solomon. And I wanna encourage you as you consider uh, this subject and the pursuit of wisdom in your own life, how to prepare yourself 